Hi, my name is Deborah and this is my testimony. Um, I had an amazing life, uh, to be honest, and uh, I lived in a Christian home and I had everything I could ask for. Uh, when I attended kindergarten, I, from day one, I started getting bullied and people, people made fun of me through my name, through how I looked like. They, they called me, they called me a stick and they called me a, a Dora and like that was fine, but a bunch of other names. And then when I, as I went on, I also started getting bullied more from grade one. And I was bullied about um, how bad my grades were. Uh, I, was, I was bullied by um, being uh, the younger child and that I only, got, um, I only got attention because my brother was a popular person. That made me feel lonely and that made me that, that made me just believe what they're saying because they repeated it over and over again and it, it, it really hurt me inside and it, and it made me doubt what I, what I thought about myself at first. From my bullying, I began to hear voices in my head telling me that I wasn't loved, that I was ugly, that I was stupid, that I had no purpose, that I had that I shouldn't have even been born. I was, that those voices told me that I should just kill myself and that there was no purpose and I was an accident and there, I had no future anyways because I wasn't supposed to be born and those those voices just kept on repeating and repeating the those same stuff over and over in my head as my as life went on I had really bad grades and I, I tried but I couldn't get anything in because I felt like I was just too stupid because this these voices were just telling me that I, I couldn't contain anything and that I wasn't even good enough to be loved. So life went on and I was just hearing these voices and I started crying myself to sleep because that was the only way I can sleep. And then after, as it went on even more, I started hearing this really sweet voice in my head when I was sleeping, but I wasn't really sure what it was, but it was just, just encouraging me. And then my teachers um, gave us a project telling, uh, asking us what we might want to be. And I, again, I didn't feel like I was anything, so I, like, I didn't think I'll have any future. So I didn't have anything to say. So I kept on asking God, like, what do I do? What do I do? Do I even have a future? And after I had a vision to be a pastor, I, I didn't believe I can do that because I couldn't even talk in front of people. It was, I couldn't talk to my parents that personally even. So I didn't understand how that was gonna happen, but I just held on to that because that was the only light in my life that I could hold on to. And as I moved on, I had, and I heard that word, I felt like everything was attacking me more than before. And I just got bullied every morning and every day. And all I went to was school and then I went to tutor and I got bullied by my teachers. So one day I was, I was in my room and I, I, was, I was just going through my work and found my grades. And I was alone at home. And I, I was looking at these grades and thinking about what my mom was gonna say. And I, I know that I know that's important to her, that people that her children get good grades. And I didn't know a lot about her, but she told me that a lot. So when I saw those grades, I I panicked. I really panicked, and I I I didn't know what to do. And I was just weeping on my bed, looking at those grades, and I just. And I, I just, I was just sitting there, putting my head down, not knowing what to tell her. And I, I, I just heard those voices, uh, those voices telling me it's, and this is, this is what I'm talking about. You, you won't compare to anything, and that, and that you're not gonna have a future. 
yeah, I, I I was gonna just go downstairs and just I was just gonna walk around and just get it out of my head but it repeated repeated saying that those grades show that your life is gonna be nothing. Your life your life is is it's a complete mess already. So why don't why don't you just end it? End it. If you end it there's no more pain. If you end it, you won't feel this pain. If you end it, you won't you you won't cause your parents any pain either, and they won't feel bad for how how horrible you're doing, and you wouldn't have to tell them either. So I walked I walked into the kitchen. I grabbed the sharpest knife, put it on the left side of my chest, and uh, I was trying to choose the right spot. For, for the right, like the softness for the right side. I, I just try to test which is the best part to literally stab myself. And while I was finding the right, the, the, the best way to do it, I, I, I just, I saw the flash of light and I felt this fire in my stomach. I, I felt it and it, it was just burning and it was convicting me. And when it when it convicted me, it just it, it was it was surprised me. So I so I stopped for a moment, and and it, and I just heard this voice, and it and it told me it's like it's not over. It told me that I have I had a future and that it's all right, and just not to do it. Two Sundays after, uh, my dad told me that we're going to my piano piano teacher's. Uh, piano teacher's church that he's attending to that he found and it was KCC. Uh, I went there and I thought this is just gonna be a regular religious church I'm like just going to another church and it's gonna be normal just go and come back but I went in there felt something weird just ignored it because I didn't want to have any more hope because I felt like any more hope is just gonna like it was gonna kill me inside even more and I just try to keep on pushing, but during worship, I, 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 I don't know. I just felt this sweet relief coming off of my chest, and I just felt like I've, I was loved. The more and more Sundays came by that we went to that church, and and I did. I wanted an encounter, but I was too scared to go there. So I, I was standing in the pew and the pastor was prophesying and he said he saw someone wearing white and he was saying the name Debbie and he kept on repeating that and and he said the uh, name Debbie. Um, I didn't realize it was me. He kept on repeating it and I was just looking around wondering who's missing this opportunity because it's kind of cool. <laughs> and. Uh, my my teacher, um, my family friend, she called, uh, she called, she called me. She said Debbie, and she said Debbie. And then after I realized it was me, he was calling. After I I I went out of the pew and I started feeling fire going up my legs as I was walking towards him. Um, uh, I I just got nervous, but. The most curious thing was there was fire. It felt like, like fire was on my legs. After that, he told me to raise my hands, but I only raised it a little bit because I was scared. And then he said to raise it higher, and I did. And then there was like a lightning, sh f like going into my hands, like through my fingers. And it it was it, it was a great experience. It was a weird experience, but it it was amazing. Before I came to KCC, I, I, I felt lonely. I felt fearful. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know my identity. I, I, I didn't, I didn't feel like I had a purpose or a future. But once I went to KCC, I, I, as I received more of the Holy Spirit, I, I felt like I knew. I. I didn't just feel, I knew who I was, and I knew that I had a purpose, I had a future, and I, I felt like I had worth, and God told me I was gonna be a preacher, and I finally had hope in that, I finally, I 
finally saw that that is actually gonna happen and now I feel like I have a proper relationship with my family. I don't doubt who I am and I know who I am and I don't have any doubt that I that I am loved and that I, know, I, I truly know who I am and I don't feel worthless anymore. I don't feel lonely and I don't feel any more I don't feel any more fear whenever I approach someone. Now I, I go out to the mall and I approach people, which I would have never done before. I, I've, I've changed because of him. I'm, I would have never imagined myself like I am doing, like what I am right now. Um, I've, I've received so many amazing gifts and I've learned about who I am through Christ and the inheritance I have, which is amazing. And I've learned about, about the many things I can possess and the many things I cannot just give to myself, but I can show to others that he's done for me.